What's up, cousin? What's up, what's up? I got a word on today. I would love for you to stay tuned. Hear what the awesome, almighty God has to say, has to say. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Dear Holy Spirit. Ah, man, I'm so excited. <laughs> I welcome you. I welcome you. I welcome you. Welcome you, please, Lord. Use me. Use me however you will, however you want, in the name of Jesus. Pray that you bless and touch this word, Lord. Anoint my lips so that this this word can get across to your people exactly how you want, in the name of Jesus. None of me, Lord. None of me, all of you. Give them the uh, spirit of discernment, Lord. Let them be able to decipher and receive if this word is truly for them in the name of Jesus in their season Lord and let's let's go after that one in 99 Let, let's pull somebody out on today Lord have your way have your way I yield this life unto you in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus amen 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 blessings folks blessings family um got a word today got a word today and this word is so it just makes me smile it makes me smile because you know if you can grasp this just the level up that comes from it is intense so god brought us today to proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 right this is a very this is a very common uh well-known verse so i'm just gonna read it and I'm going to give it to you how God gave it to me. And I pray it speaks to you. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto, thy, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And always acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. All right. I'm going to honestly just hit that one more time. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and always in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths amen once again something very common like we we hear that all the time it's in songs it's in music you know we hear that very often but what does that really mean you know so um i want to describe the word proverb right so this is in the book of proverbs proverb means a short a short saying that is widely uh used to express an obvious truth Amen. And the book of Proverbs uh, basically means that it's a book that contains truths or words of wisdom. Amen. So um, basically, you know, the Lord is telling me that, yo, amen. It's help me, Jesus. It's so good to read Proverbs. Proverbs is so anointed because, number one, the Holy Bible itself is the word of God and the word of God is truth. Amen. But when you get into Proverbs, you are literally reading the true promises um, of God, the, the, the wise words of God and always. And I think that that's just that that was my first time looking up the definition. So that just really touched me. All right. So with that being said, God led me to the first commandment yet again. I think that it's so um, beautiful and strategic strategic you know god is a guy of like we just can't even grasp what he does or how he does it but you know if you really pay attention everything still leads back to commandment number one which is to love the lord thy god with all their heart mind soul amen so you know god broke it down like this and he said you have to keep in mind that we can't have love without trust. We can't have love without trust. So if the first commandment, the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord, but 
you don't follow uh, Proverbs 3, 5, which says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, you cannot be following or obedient to the first commandment. You feel me? And I think that a lot of people, um, we don't see how we don't trust God at all. We don't even realize that our lifestyles represent and reflect a life that don't trust God. Um, and if we don't trust him, we cannot love him. Right? So it kind of goes in that, that order. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not onto thy own understanding. So if you lean on your own understanding, you are confessing that you do not trust the Lord. And if you do not trust the Lord, you cannot love the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so one of the biggest ways that he uh, told me to get the people to see that is he said, mention fasting and praying. Right? Mention fasting and prayer. And you go to Ephesians 6, um, you know, you talk about putting on the whole armor of God. Whew. And we're going to get to that. You talk about putting on the whole armor of God, and then you really, really think about it. It's like, you know, you know that at the end, it, also, it says you have to fast and pray. And honestly, that's that seventh piece of armor. But, you know, we've been taught that as soon as you wake up, you go to the kitchen. You know, we've been taught that you're supposed to have a big breakfast. We've been taught to eat at least three meals a day. You know? But the Bible says that some stuff only comes out with fasting and praying. With fasting and praying. And so God, God said, ask my children. He said, how can you say that you trust me and you don't even believe that you can skip breakfast without passing out? You know? You, some of us haven't missed a breakfast, lunch, or dinner in 20 years, but we say we trust the Lord. You know, sometimes God just wants that time. And of course, keep in mind that fasting doesn't have, to, everybody's called um, to each their own. So fasting doesn't have to be this, um, every fast doesn't have to be a Daniel fast. Amen. Where you go, yo, three weeks, yo, 21 days with, with, with nothing desirable at all. Sometimes God is just asking for one meal, one additional hour, you know, a little bit more of your time. Rather than waking up and going to the kitchen, wake up and get on your knees. You know, spend some time in his presence because that will show you more so than anything. It will remind you exactly what Jesus said when he was in the desert. Amen. And and, and Satan uh, tempted him by asking him to turn the rocks into bread. And, and Jesus stumped him and said, yo, for a man does not survive on bread alone. Amen. And that is the same for all of us. We don't survive on that stuff alone. So when we fast, that is actually a declaration of faith and trust saying, yo, God, I trust that I will be alive in a well a few hours later um, if I don't have this bread right now. Right. And I think that really goes deep because we lean on our own understanding of saying, I have to eat three times a day. I have to do this, you know, I have to do that. Or I have to work this job to have money. Um, you know what I'm saying? It goes very deep and you can see it in different ways. But God is saying, I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. But you don't believe that. And once we can believe that, oh my God, the entire body of Christ gets so much stronger. We get so much stronger. So, um... Moving on, I just challenge everyone. Uh, on verse 6, it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So the challenge that I put before us all is to sit back and write down the areas of our life where we truly acknowledge the Lord. And keep in mind, God knows our heart, so it's not like we can lie or hide it. You know, we have to sit back and ask, Hmm, when I'm... uh." Let's go, whew, let's go to uh, students, right? When I'm picking my classes for the semester, when I'm choosing uh, what I want to major in, am I truly asking God what path he has for me or am I going based off what my family members have done or what other people have suggested, what other people have told me that I'm good at, what I desire to be, you know? When it comes to what I do eat in the daytime, throughout the, am I saying, hey, God, you know, what should we have today? How, what, what is going to strengthen the body of Christ on today? Or am I just going based off of that sinful tongue, of the taste buds? You know, it goes very deep because the Lord showed me. Amen. And, oh, prepare us. Prepare us, oh, Lord. Please let our hearts and minds receive this in the name of Jesus. The Lord showed me that the same way people can be physically. Amen. They can be physically or naturally transgender. You can be spiritually transgender. 
let me break that down you know um obviously we know what physical transgender is if it's a male who uh changes themselves into a female or vice versa but spiritually transgender means that you know you could be working that nine to five every day because you think that's what you have to do to provide for yourself and your family but the whole time god has told you to go travel the world because he needs you to preach and he needs you to speak to people and he needs you to to go and, and strengthen another group or, or body and you don't see how you don't you say oh, i don't have the money to to book that flight or i don't have the time to go do this or go do that but the whole time god is saying but i am your provider proverbs the whole everything in it is just about how god provides right but let's be real we don't read so we don't know you know he could be uh talking to a doctor you know you have somebody who wants to be a doctor or wants to be a nurse but the whole time god is calling you to be a lawyer a lawyer or god is calling you to be a teacher or or a preacher or something like that and we go off of what we want to do and this next one uh this next example it hit me extra hard because um athletes Ooh, come on Jesus athletes sometimes we are so addicted to and attached to sports and that's the only thing that we can even see ourselves being and without that we are we, we, we honestly believe that we are nothing we think that the only purpose that God put into us was to go shoot a basketball or, or run fast or, or catch a football or something like that but realistically God is saying I put more greatness inside of you you have to see it and I say that that hit deep for me and hard for me because in my own personal testimony amen thank you Jesus I was one of those people that God had to shut the entire world down. Amen. Because COVID is a blessing. If you see in the spirit, God had to shut the entire world down to get me to see, amen, that I was blessed beyond being a student athlete or a coach. I was blessed beyond sports in the name of Jesus. Some of us, uh, God had to shut the entire world down to even, for us to even realize that we didn't need to be on that job, that there was more inside of us. We were complaining about not having rest and not having a break and, and and just being tired. And although God was pushing us to go ahead and move on out the way, we wouldn't. But our Father loves us so much that He would shut everything down just to get you in the place that you were. So I just want to quickly share my personal ter testimony. Um, this was the day before we announced to all of the athletes, for those who don't know, uh, I am a coach. I am a track and field coach specifically and I lived in Missouri prior to moving back to Texas and so we're up there and this was the day before we announced to all of the kids that we were about to have to go home and that the season was over due to the COVID season and so I put my boxing gloves on and I go to this little spot where I box at and if anybody's ever boxed you know that you get tired really fast and it can be really intense and if you have a lot of energy a lot of emotions within you you know it'll turn you up so I get there, I'm, I'm boxing, I'm boxing, I'm going. It's probably about my third round, amen, in the name of Jesus. And I'm just going, I'm just going. And I just felt my anger and my, my aggression and just, just the accepting of, wow, this is really over, over. I'm not, we're not going to be able to go to nationals. We're not going to be able to uh, go to conference. We're not going to be able to do all of these things that we had planned to do. Everything that my own understanding taught me what happened and showed me what happened, I realized it wasn't coming true. And I was getting angry. And so I began to hit harder and harder and faster and faster. And I get to the point of complete exhaustion. And I just heard God yell at me. And this was probably the loudest I've heard God speak ever. And he said, who are you? Amen. He said, who are you? And it just broke me down. He, it, just, it, just broke, it just broke me down because I didn't have an answer. Amen. I didn't know because my whole entire life I had been identified as a student athlete. I didn't been in school for 20 years. I didn't play sports since, you know, boys and girls club days. So now I'm at a point in time in my life and I'm at the oldest age of my life where all of that has been stripped from me. And I have two choices to say, that's the only thing that God put me on this earth for. And now the devil took it and now I'm worthless. 
or I can say, I know that God created me for much more. And I will, I will, I will find and follow my purpose. And that's exactly what I did. And I packed my vehicle up and I came home and I got to praying. And I got in the word. And I saw, oh, I, I began to seek God, right? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and you shall enter a man in the name of Jesus and on today I just want to encourage somebody and push somebody to really really come on speak to God and talk to God and listen and allow him to show you who you truly are because where we feel like we have to do things a certain way or if we don't do them a certain way we are not uh successful and that's normally an earthly natural physical view God is saying because I am your provider because you are in me, because I am in you, you have all things, but you have to trust that I love you, right? We have to trust that, amen? So I'm just so thankful for that because that really brought me out and that really changed me. And I feel like if anybody's really been, you know, paying attention to my Facebook or just paying attention to details, the evidence is there. God is a great God. He really is. And he has done absolutely nothing but uh, provide for me and supply all of my needs since I have been home. Because I will share this with y'all. And I share this with you humbly. And I share this with you truly to glorify the name of our almighty God. Since I have been home, I have uh, made more money. I have more funds. I have more bank accounts than I ever did while I was up there working in something that, mm, hey amen, I thought I was supposed to be doing. And I was, but that wasn't it. That wasn't all. Amen? You know, when you come home and you realize you're unemployed and you realize you there's nowhere else you can go because everything is closed down and everything is shut down. And, of course, you know, I have an amazing mother. I have to come home and live with her. Um, it's like, you know, the devil wants you to question, oh, how this is going to happen? You still got bills. You still got that. You know what I'm saying? Where are you going to go next? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? But when you put your full faith and your full trust in the Lord and you listen to verse 5 and you say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and you receive that, God will do for you but that stuff that you can never even imagine. Because right now, this car that I am sitting in, this is mine. Brand new. 2020. And there's no way I could have did that myself. I still can't do it myself. I'd be like, God, <laughs> what's up? You know what I'm saying? What's up? But I trust him. I trust him. And I, I ain't going to go into that story, but just how I even got into this vehicle, it was just, you know it's nothing but God. I know it's nothing but God. So that's that. And I just encourage everyone to pray daily and ask God to allow them to see in the spirit and to see themselves the way that he does. When we can see ourselves the way that God does, it makes this verse a lot easier. Um, and we can, when we can pray and we can read our, our word and realize who God really is, it makes this a lot easier. We can trust in the Lord with all of our heart and we can lean not on our own understanding because we know that he will not fail us. God is a God of truth. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. Accept and receive that. God cannot lie. It may not come when you want it or look how you want it to, but because he says my ways are to prosper you, everything that I do is good for you, you need to accept and receive that and accept and receive that whatever comes along with that is still a blessing. Because when I got sent home from Missouri, I praised and worshiped for nine, 10 hours straight all the way here because I knew that all 2020 I had been praying that, hey God, I miss my family. I'm ready to see my family. Spring break was coming up, uh, I think a week and a half later. And I was like, God, can I please be able to go home just to sit in for a day or two? And God said, I'm going to send you home for the rest. I'm going to send you home early. And I'd be a fool to look at that and think that wasn't a blessing. Amen. Amen. So the last bit, I just encourage everybody, definitely go through uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 3 is what we're reading from on today. But also Ephesians 6, where... Uh, you know, the God just God really just speaks on putting on the whole armor of God because that is so important. You know, you got to have that armor to really, really walk that walk because that armor encompasses things like faith. You know what I'm saying? And faith is what trumps, trumps everything. And that still goes back to what we are talking about. I feel like verse uh, 5 and 6 truly just says, have faith in me. God is saying, have faith in me. Trust that I'll do it. 
trust that I got you. And um, if you acknowledge him, he will direct your paths, meaning he will show you what jobs are for you. He will show you what people are for you, what relationships are for you. He will show you who your husband and wives are. He will show you all of these things and all of these details, but you have to be quiet. You have to talk. You have to pray to God, but you also have to be quiet and listen because we don't even know what we have, what, what to pray for, especially if we don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And, um, uh, I, I just want to throw this bit in there too, especially as speaking on putting on the armor of God, because for some of us, it has to be very physical. We are so connected to the natural world that it does have to be a physical thing. And so for me, every time I get on here, a lot of times y'all see the clothes that I wear, I normally have on like God is dope stuff, um, or door stuff, or you'll see, um, me and my own, his alkaline angel t-shirt or something like that. And I want to let you know that that actually is because of a reason. Um, I have done a wardrobe change. I don't, wear what I used to wear or buy what I used to buy because I do want to feel like I am not only spiritually clothed a man in the armor of God but physically clothed in the armor of God so for instance my guy uh, Wesley Shaw here who makes or door you know my, me and him were talking one day outside of uh, the fountain downtown and I told him I was like bro I don't know what it is about your clothes but I know that they are anointed because of how I mean, just beats mode, how strong they make you feel. You feel the power of God when you are when you are in this material. You feel his hard work and his dedication and his prayers and his time and his effort put into it. And I told him, I was like, man, somebody could drive through right now and shoot me in my chest. And I'd be all right. I, I, I knew, I know I will be okay. And that could sound crazy, but I had that much faith in God that he is my protector and he is my provider amen of all things so with that being said you know i just want to give a shout out to my brother i thank you so much for all that you are doing um my guy i don't know if you know but just being able to clothe myself in a a man of god's clothing it really does something for my heart, for my spirit, for my faith, and all of that. And I, I just pray and prophesy over you right now in the name of Jesus that you will be able to spread that all over this world. You will be able to spread that anointing, that blessing all over this world in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we got more people. Um, we got more um, men of God, women of God coming out with their things like that. And um, when you put them on, you will know. You will know. So, clothe yourself in the armor of God, spiritually and physically. You know what I'm saying? Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and allow the Lord to guide and direct all of your steps and all of your paths. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all things. I pray that whoever this message is for on today, that it does cross them, dear Heavenly Father, in their season and exactly when it can register um, properly for them, dear Heavenly Father. I pray that you have touched and anointed and blessed this word. And that is, of course, none of me and all of you, Lord. I just thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for speaking to me, Lord, and I just pray right now that we all can truly develop that relationship that you desire, dear Heavenly Father, with all of us, dear Heavenly Father. Let you be able to come into our lives and have your way, have your will, reveal to us your vision, your purpose, dear God, your desires for us. I pray that we can have a true encounter, encounter with the Lord. Show us who we are in your eyes. And let us know you truly. Peace, prosperity, and blessings to us all, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do thank you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So with that being said, I'm out. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to drop my email in the comments. Because if anybody has prayer requests, I want them to be able to shoot them that way. Or you can always DM me, anything like that. I want to make myself available as a woman of God um, to the people of God um, in whatever way possible. In whatever way possible. So I just feel that so strong on my heart that um, somebody may need a talk or somebody just, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you need. But if God pulls you to me, reach out. I'm here. I'm here. I'm open and I'm willing. I love you. God bless y'all. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay safe. Stay in the word. And you know what I'm saying? Just keep God first.
Amen.